Hey everybody, welcome back to my Formula One analysis here from the race weekend in Brazil. And uh, I mean, let's just say, first of all, it's so damn cool how exciting the, the races are and how exciting F1 is at the moment. Why is it exciting? Because both Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes are like all on the same speed. Everybody has a chance to win. And that's just so epic because you just never know what's going to happen. And the same again in Brazil. And anyways, Brazil is such a great track, always produces exciting racing. So we've had like one of the most fun races ever. Uh, unbelievable in front of the TV. Um, yeah, and let's, I mean, let's just start with Max Verstappen then, who's done an ab absolutely epic weekend. Also throughout the race, I mean, really, he's always been like, I always said like he was between first or second in terms of driver ratings for me throughout the whole season, with Lewis being first most of the time and, and Max being second. But again, this, uh, this weekend, I mean, just unbelievable. That pole position lap was awesome. Then in the race, I mean, in the race to pass Lewis two times and have and be on the pace with Lewis in terms of race speed as well. That's really like awesome, awesome driving. And then fair and square passing one of the most difficult guys to pass in F1 being Lewis. Once just in a completely normal, normal racing situation by being so hyper aggressive and just so on the ball. Um, that was spectacular. And, uh, and catching Lewis off guard, like totally. Huh? And then the second time with the safety car, just doing an epic restart. Lewis not doing the best job there on the restart and then going around the outside. Or uh, Lewis had the medium tire, of course, so that was more difficult. I think that was the case. Anyways, so that was just brilliant stuff. Uh, so respect uh, Max Verstappen, definitely uh, uh, yeah, top two drivers of the, of the season for me. Um, still second though, you'd put Lewis first uh, with the incredible season that he's had. But it's very, very close between those two guys. And, um, and then also, I mean, great job from Red Bull. Huh? They've produced that car now to be able to race at that race speed in the, in the race as well. And the Honda engine as well. Awesome power that they're starting to deliver now on the straights. I mean, they're quick huh, on the straights. So that's really, really cool to see. And, and we saw it with Gasly and Lewis in the end there, the Honda power just being a little bit even possibly more than the Mercedes now. So it's like they've all caught up, caught up to Mercedes and some are even better than Mercedes now. I mean, notably the Ferrari engine. So that's a big testament to the job that those guys have been doing. Um, and um, then let's go to the Ferrari crash. Um, <laughs> Ferrari crash. I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, really, really tough for them and the team. That's not a situation to be in. It's horrible. It's really, really horrible. And uh, particularly when you're like in Ferrari, that's the worst that can happen in the world. Um, at the same time, though, I mean, unfortunately, from the outside, entertainment wise, we all want to see those kind of things, you know, those kind of incidents because it pr just provides so much spice, so much spice and, uh, and intensity to everything. So, um, as long as they don't exaggerate, but um, and then I mean to explain it, great battle and it's awesome that they let them race and great battling. I mean Charles had the, had the fresher tires, so he was always going to be uh, be quicker from behind and, and try and try and catch up and, and move forward. And then he made a great great move on for, on on Vettel there down the inside and then uh, and then Vettel though tried to come back and I've had that incident before. It's a really difficult one because uh, Leclerc everybody tries to squeeze people as much as possible and not leave any extra space. That's always important. So Leclerc already like leaves the minimum of space on the outside there. And then Vettel, as soon as he comes in front with his car, he off immediately starts to squeeze Leclerc because that's what you can when you're the guy, when you're, as soon as you move a little bit ahead, you are the dominant guy and you can dictate where to go. And um, yeah, it's difficult. I mean, I see a little bit less of a fault on, uh, on Leclerc's side there. That's how I would put it. And I've had similar incidents myself in the racing. It's just uh, the guy in front, you know, you move, you think you're moving quite slowly and it's important to pressure the guy um, towards the inside as soon as possible. And the guy on the inside doesn't, it's difficult to see it from a perspective. You don't see that the guy in front is moving over and there's millimeters, you know. So by the time you realize, oh, he's moving over, um, you've already touched. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one. It's just uh, both of them being as aggressive as possible. And it's a tiny thing, you know, I mean, they fractionally touched and it just destroyed the both cars, even though it was just a tiny touch. Uh, but I would see a little bit less fault there on, on Leclerc because possibly Vettel moved over um, a little bit too soon, a little bit too, uh, too quickly. But it's really small, huh? small things. Um, and then uh, after that, I mean, Albon Hamilton, we had another great battle there with Lewis coming out on fresh tires and trying to catch up for Stappen. Um, and again there, I mean, I think, yeah, of course, Lewis has more of a fault and Albon has less of a fault there. But then again, Albon, I mean, he left the door open completely for Lewis to dive into there. And Lewis did get like quite, quite far in there. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's worth a, a penalty. With the way things have been going this year, maybe I would even have preferred that there's no penalty again there because Albon has some fault as well. It's not like it's 100% Lewis. 
because Alban left the door open and Alban kind of should have left a bit of space as well because Lewis was in there. So there's no reason why, why you can't leave a little space. Uh, Alban said that he just wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting Lewis to dive down there and wasn't looking. Okay, but that's not a valid excuse. So um, anyways, so uh, definitely more of Lewis' fault, but uh, I think it would be nice maybe to not have a penalty even in that case, to really just let, free up the racing, let them race, let them sort the things out themselves. I think that would be good. Um, and then we just go back to Honda being f finishing first and second. Uh, this is the first time since 1991, first time since Senna. And I think that's so cool. So cool to see the progress they finally made. Now it's so important to have that variety in the sport. And Honda being up there is just, just awesome. So respect Honda for the job you've finally done now to get that engine up there and have that performance really, really good. Uh, let's go down to Gasly as well. Gasly, uh, it's really nice. I think all of us will agree. It's been such an incredibly hard season for him. It's horrible, you know, to be in the situation that he was in, to get kicked out of the team. It's just horrible, really, really tough. And then to see him now, like, coming back and, and getting this awesome result, the first podium in a Toro Rosso after such a fantastic race is great job. Uh, I think we all, um, we all uh, are happy for him uh, to do that, that awesome, awesome performance um, and hope to see a lot more great drives from him in the future because we all know that he can do it. So... That's really, really nice. And then we come to the, to the next guy, which is Sainz, who's finished on the podium in the McLaren P3, and he's closing off an unbelievable season. And I've always said he's in the top four of, uh, of best drivers of the year, together with Leclerc. So it's Leclerc, Sainz, Verstappen, Hamilton. At the moment, I would probably put uh, uh, Hamilton, Verstappen, maybe even on a par, like equal, especially after this race now. Um, maybe, don't know. Although, no, you'd put Hamilton slightly ahead, but more or less, you know what I mean. And then, um, and then Sainz is now third, uh, just in front of uh, Leclerc, I would say. He's just done an unbelievable season. I mean, so many points with that McLaren, so great. Uh, fantastic job there. That's, that rounds it off for me. Exciting to see some of the after effects of that race, particularly from the Ferrari camp. Interesting that they canceled the press conference. Very, very smart move, I think, from them uh, to cancel that press conference because that's where the problems start. You know, then one driver says a little bit, the other guy, the other guy reads that, so he feels the need to say a little bit more or to uh, counter the argument of the driver, and then it just builds up in the press and that causes huge chaos. So, of course, it would be nice for us to see it, but I totally understand it's very smart from Ferrari uh, to have taken the drivers away from that, um, that planned press conference that they were, they were planning because it's important to really make sure the minimum gets out and all is discussed internally. And I thought it was very smart as well from, my, from, um, from the Ferrari boss. Um, I'm a blank. I'm in Havana here, by the way. So maybe I had one mojito or so too much. Not today, in, in past days. Anyways, now I remember Mattia Binotto. Uh, <laughs> Mattia Binotto. Um, very smart from him. That, uh, that he um, um, like doesn't, doesn't give a fault in the media. That's really, really important to keep neutral. That was a great strength from Toto Wolf as well, between me and Lewis, always keeping neutral, especially externally. Anyways, as long as possible, it's important for him to try and stay neutral, especially to the outside, and keep things internal, uh, especially if he wants to apportion blame there. So I think that was very, very well managed from Ferrari, but it's going to be explosive inside of Ferrari. Like, seriously, it's going to be so insane. That's so hard to manage. Oh my goodness. And they have like a whole, more, a whole one more season to go like that. Oh geez, that's so easy. Anyway, I wish them all the best. Um, and uh, that's it. So uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel and um, let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that I said. And then uh, stay tuned. Abu Dhabi, I'll be back behind the scenes. So there'll be some vlogging again from Abu Dhabi. Looking forward to that. I hope you tune in. Subscribe if you're new. Bye bye. Let's go salsa dancing.